Welcome everyone to 24-7 Sports. I'm Tom Loy. Alongside the 105 guys, we've got Director of Scouting Andrew Ivins and National Analyst Cooper Patagna. Signing day is right around the corner, so we're looking at 2025 recruiting classes all across the country and bringing you a look at the soon-to-be signees. We're going to hit a few superlatives and state our take on many of these prospects. Today, we are looking at Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets currently have the number 17 recruiting class in 2025. And there are 22 commits set to play for head coach Brent Key. Andrew, we will start with you. Early draft pick potential, a guy with elite traits now that might find himself drafted very early in the next couple of years. Who do you got, man? Well, Tom, I think people see Georgia Tech top 25 ranked recruiting class thinking smoke and mirrors. I'm going to say this off the jump. There's some future NFL players in this group. They've done an excellent job of evaluating and finding talent all throughout Georgia and really the country. The headliner for me, it's Josh Petty. He is our number five ranked offensive tackle. He's a five-star prospect, number 21 overall. He'll be the program's highest ranked signee since Calvin Johnson, Megatron, back in uh, 2004. This guy checks it off box after box, long lean frame, 6050, 265, 34 and a half inch arms, 82 and a half inch wingspan, elite multi-sport profile, wrestling, throwing events, and he's a two-way player. I think you can make the case that if Josh Petty wanted to rush the quarterback, someone at the power four level is going to give him that opportunity. Now, is he going to be ready to go day one? I'm not sure. I think he's going to have to get the body right, but Georgia Tech has played some young, uh, true freshman offensive lineman in the past under the direction of Brent Key. This is a huge addition for them uh, in the NIL era. He's a legit talent. Other schools wanted him around the country, college football playoff contenders. And I think for Georgia Tech, this is a cornerstone of the future for them. Yeah, you don't hear five-star in Georgia Tech a lot in the same sentence, right? So I, I'm going to go with Petty as well. And, and we're talking about a top 32 player in the way that we have done our evaluations, these guys have to earn their top 32 status, right? And they have to play their way all through their senior season in, in these postseason events as well. Josh Petty was one of those guys that we were kind of monitoring and we were wondering, is he going to be able to hold on to this spot in the top 32? And the answer is yes. I mean, we've loved him as a senior, the way that he plays at the left tackle spot. I personally had some questions. What is he going to look like in pass protection? Uh, but he's strong at the point of attack, a little bit quicker, a little bit more nimble on his feet than I gave him credit for. He's a long kid. As Andrew alluded to, it's going to take a little time, right? The last measurement we had on him was around 265. I think he can get up north of 300 pounds, play around 310 uh, but super, super intriguing kid that I like a lot. And he's going to go play for an offensive line coach in Brent Key, right? So I think he's going to a really, really good spot where he can develop, uh, but he's going to get the best of both worlds and also probably get to play early, drink through a fire hose a little bit. But it's a really, really good spot for him. It was nearly a clean sweep, but I went another direction. I went with cornerback Dalen Penson, and it's a guy I know you guys both love. This is one Georgia Tech really needs to hold on to. I know there's some schools sniffing around, but he's the real deal. He can do it on both sides of the ball. I love the overall ability in the secondary. He's a potential game changer for the Yellow Jackets. Day one impact, a guy who's going to see the field early and often. Cooper, who do you got, man? Well, we're piggybacking here. I'll, I'll go with Penson as well, and this is a guy that, like, when you evaluate these small or smaller uh, nickel players, and we have them in that athlete category, is he going to be a receiver? Is he going to be a de defensive back? You know, we had Trent McDuffie at Washington, and we had a lot of question marks about the height. He was around five ten and a half, but he checked every single box. And Dalen Pinson reminds me of that in the same way in terms of everything you see from track and field to multi-sport to the genetics to a guy running a four four eight, and then when you turn on the tape. You forget about all those things, and you're just so fixated on the type of player that he is. And I love the versatility. It doesn't matter where you line him up. You can put him at receiver. You can put him at corner. You can put him in the return game. He is going to be the best player on the field. This kid is electric. I can't wait to see him. Drew has been the uh, the, the biggest fan uh, of his for quite some time, so I actually feel bad that I'm pretty sure I took your pick here, Drew, but a lot of love for Dalen Pinson. Uh, Coop, we spent too much time together. I knew you were going to take Dalen Pinson. Hey, you guys like buried the lead here, uh, doubled at Georgia's 3A 
uh, track meet and the 110 meter hurdles uh, and the triple jump nearly cleared 50 feet. That is like an elite, elite, elite marker. Uh, both his parents uh, ran track and, and did events there at Georgia. Hey, we list him as an athlete because I legitimately think he could be a game breaking wide receiver. And Cooper, you're right. Like you can watch his senior cut up and you're like, this is a top 100 player. Then you bake in all the data, everything we know about him. You get so much more excited up. I did have another name written down here. Rayshon Dinkins, safety out of the state of Georgia. Hey, Georgia Tech's going to have to hold on to him. You know, the Bulldogs, Kirby Smart, they're sniffing around. But he's one of my favorite watches here through the halfway point of the senior seasons. Super instinctive, chews up turf, gets off blocks. He's got a 40-inch ver uh, vertical jump to go to himself. I think he's a guy that can play multiple spots, split safety prospect. Really, really like Rayshon Dinkins out of Warner Robins High School. Defensive lineman Christian Garrett is the guy I'm going with. Big, strong, powerful prospect, advanced skill set. Just a guy who can play and help right now. I love the motor, high energy guy. I like that get for Georgia Tech. Boomer Bust, an intriguing talent who might underperform or potentially underachieve or outperform. Um, kind of a mystery. Who do you got, Ivans? Well, I don't know if he really fits this category, but I wanted to talk about him and I've never seen him in person. Grady Adamson, the quarterback commit for Georgia Tech, number 35 ranked signal caller for us, uh, just kind of moved up a little bit in the three star range. I think you need to give credit to Chris Winkie, Buster Faulkner for what they've done in that quarterback room there in Atlanta, their volume shooting through the high school ranks. Zach Pyron, he's still got three years of eligibility left. We saw Aaron Philo get into the game. They also took another uh, quarterback from the high school ranks the year before. Adamson, he's a guy that should have been on my freaks list. Uh, he back squats 545 pounds. He hang cleans at 325 pounds. I thought he was more of a pocket passer, but you turn on the tape, He's moving around, running out there. You think about Haynes King and that offense there uh, at Georgia Tech. They want the quarterback to be mobile. Gradium Adamson is a guy that can do just that. Started off his senior season really hot. He's lost his last two games, had a three-interception outing. So uh, it isn't exactly clean, but I like the idea of him, and I think he can win in the ACC. Big fan of that pick. And, and Georgia Tech has done like a sneaky good job with their quarterback room and what they have there behind Haynes King. I'm going to go with Justin Hazenheidel, a guy from Germany. Uh, came to the States a few years ago, got banged up in his junior year, missed most of the season, coming back as a senior. We had some question marks. One, about the growth potential. Two, what's it going to look like at the next level? I think he's really going to be boxed in. He's going to have to be a center at the next level. Can he play guard? I don't think so. So he's got limited positional flex. You can see what Brent Key likes in him. Uh, and this is a guy that I think can have a serviceable career. Uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, there are some things around him, some red flags, uh, things outside of his control that I'm a little bit concerned about when you start projecting to the next level. So interested to kind of see how that one pans out. Boomer bust for me. I am going with your five star offensive tackle or offensive lineman, Josh Petty. Uh, it's simple. I just if he can continue gaining weight, keeping it on, adding to his frame. I have no concerns about him at the next level and beyond. That's literally my only concern. Super athletic. You guys raved about him. Moves well. Outstanding on both sides of the ball. It's simply that. Can he keep the weight on? If he is, he's probably going to be a first round pick down the road. Maybe a second diamond in the rough. Uh, Cooper, uh, let's see a three-star prospect who could surprise and potentially even find himself drafted at the next level. I'm going to go with Carrington Coombs. Is he an edge rusher? Is an off-ball linebacker? I mean, it's it's tough to tell. He is a good football player, right? Uh, 6'2", 225 pounds, uh, plays predominantly off the edge right now with his hand in the ground. Uh, but he is super, super active kid that I like a lot. I got to give a lot of credit to Hudson Standish, uh, who's also a big fan of this kid, our guy on our scouting team. Uh, he's done tremendous work. And I just think this is one of those guys that if you look – uh, two to three years from now, and we're talking about Georgia Tech as a potential top 25 program, and it's guys like Carrington Coombs running all over the field, making plays. Uh, these are the type of guys that they're going to have to win on consistently. And you look at this class, there are a lot of these guys with that type of profile, guys that we like, maybe have one trait that they're missing. But if you're Georgia Tech, these are the dudes that you have to swing on, especially in the state of Georgia. I think this kid kind of represents that idea. Well, here's another one for you, Cooper. Uh, fits everything you just said. Jaden Barr, our number 58 ranked safety. I think he might be more of a off-ball linebacker. 5'11", 190 pounds this summer. Looks much bigger on his senior tape. Two-way player, repping at uh, running back. 
in Nickelback. He flies downhill. He hits people as a senior, over a thousand yards of offense on a hundred touches, 22 touchdowns on the other side of the ball, 41 tackles, three pass breakups and interception reminds me of Jaden ball at Florida. Another two way guy. Uh, a lot of schools were looking at late. He ends up with the Gators. He's making some noise as a true freshman. So I don't know where Jaden Barr is going to play, but get him on my football team. I'm glad you brought him up earlier, Ivans. My diamond in the rough, quarterback Grady Adamson. If he ends up getting drafted one day, I will not be shocked. I like the mechanics, love the patience, the poise in the pocket. Does a great job of keeping his eyes downfield. Just a lot to like super athletic, tough runner. He's kind of he's kind of a badass to put it to put it simply, but I think he's going to surprise a lot of people in college. Uh, that wraps it up, though. As I said before, we're going to hit a ton of schools leading up to December's early signing period. But for Andrew Ivins and Cooper Patagna, I am Tom Loy. As always, stay locked to 247sports.com.